let's uh, use this pointer. Yeah, right. yeah, hello everyone, uh, uh, am I audible? Right. Okay, so uh, I will be talking about uh, the says knowledge representation and inference. So basically the knowledge uh, we are, what we are talking about can come from different modalities, it can be an image, it can come from text or audio anything. So for this talk we will uh, restrict it to uh, be text, hence uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, natural language processing. So. Uh, Natural language processing, as everyone knows, uh, has been uh, widely researched in many uh, last many decades. So, one of the problem that uh, has been researched a lot is the question answering, and based on the question answering, step, the Turing test has been posed. So, and recently, IBM Watson was uh, one of the question answering system which won the Jeopardy challenge. So, uh, that was a quite a good advancement in the NL NLP task. Uh, another task for related to NLP is the machine translation where uh, you are given uh, some sentence in one language, you are supposed to convert it to some other language. But you know what happens when you go to Google Translate. So, uh, another NLP task which people uh, have worked a lot is automatic text summarization where you are given a piece of text, suppose a bunch of news articles and want to find a summarize a smaller version of the text. So, and last but not the least, but the sentiment analysis where you are given a bunch of reviews about say movies or hotel restaurants or anything and you want to find uh, the user uh, sentiment while uh, writing that review, whether it was a negative or positive or somewhere in between them. So th these are some tasks where you can use the text data. So uh, I will go a little deeper in the sentiment analysis task. So uh, any guesses can it be posed as a supervised learning problem or, problem or unsupervised learning problem? Supervised, right? Okay, little further. Classify, classification or regression? Yeah, great. That works. Yeah, let's see there. So okay. So, uh, so what kind of training data will get for sentiment analysis? Any guesses on that? What kind of data that will get training data? what form it will be. So basically we will have a piece of text, a paragraph, a review and a number right, say 1 to 5 star, 1 being the poorest, 5 being the best, this right. Now uh, suppose you want to do classification, you want to use nearest neighbor. How will you find nearest neighbor of one piece of text to another piece of text? Yeah. Yeah, so feature vector is what? A number, right? Yes. Yeah, so you can use the equality and distance or some other similarity or dissimilarity measure, right? Correct. That's that's great. Yeah, but uh, how do you get the numbers for text? Sorry? No, no, ratings is the label. We are talking about the data points. They are text pieces, yeah? So, uh, sorry? Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, we need some way to get this review, the text data into some numbers, right? So that is one need. Now, uh, suppose uh, my training data has reviews like uh, this movie was really bad. It has really poor storylines and some other bunch of reviews. And I have labels for that. I know that this was negative sentiment or one star or something. Now uh, I get a, another test instance which says this movie was horrible. But the horrible word I have never never seen in the, my training data. So how will you make prediction about those words? Yeah, any guesses? Yeah, correct. Correct, right? So. Even if I haven't seen horrible uh, earlier, I don't know horrible is related to uh, negative sentiment most of the time or the positive sentiment. So what we need is a word to word similarity, some some measure of that. So that's where uh, we motivate, uh, we come up with this thing word representation. What we do is uh, we each word we have a vector which captures some information about the word. Those are called word representation, and uh, so. This is a small example. Suppose 
there is one way of representing is called one hot encoding. Suppose my vocabulary has only four words. So uh, how will I represent where the first number this represents presence of word zebra, second represents uh, presence of words horse and so on. So, so we can clearly see the vector corresponding to zebra will be this and horse will be second one and address zero and so on. So what, what can be a vector for summer school if I want a vector for summer school, what will it be? 0, 0, 1, 1, right? Yeah, we can simply add them and we can get a vector for summer school. But uh, are, are these uh, vectors good enough for a purpose? They are simple for sure, but they have a lot of problem. So this was example for four words, but if I take uh, English, English language, there will be many, many words. So dimension of this vector is going to be huge. And uh, another problem with them is, uh, I know that zebra and horse are somewhat similar than zebra in school. So does it capture it some way? No, right? They don't share any dimension any anyway. So I cannot uh, infer this information that zebra and horse are similar than zebra in school. I cannot infer from these vectors. So we, we need uh, vectors which can capture this uh, similarity between different words. That's where uh, comes a quote from a famous linguist which says, you shall know a word by the company it keeps. Uh, what does it mean is, uh, if I have a word, I'll look at all the words which co-occur with that word and their frequencies. And based on that, I can characterize the meaning of that word. So suppose I have a word minister. So minister can co-occur with uh, different words like development, people, politics. It can be mentioned with them. They can also be mentioned with, say, scam, corruption, degree, or some other words. So uh, let's take an example. So suppose we are looking, uh, we are trying to find a representation for the word star. What we do is we go to our co corpus, the text data that we have, and look at uh, some uh, words which co-occur with stars, so shining, cold, night, bright, uh, full, and etc. Right? Now, uh, what we want to do is capture the meaning of stars using the other words which are occurring with stars. So if from this way, we can uh, form a table like this, where I can say star has co-occurred with shining 38 times, with stars have co-occurred with bright 45 times, and similarly. So if I do this way, I can, I can easily sh see that sun shining. So they're, they're likely to co-occur, right? No? Sun doesn't shine? OK. So looking at the star, looking at the sun, but I will never say cucumber is so shining or cucumber is so bright or something. I will, I will never say that. So if we, uh, if we capture these numbers and suppose I have, I have only two dimensions, if I plot them, so sun and stars will come closer compared to cucumber, right? So this is a notion, uh, uh, this is the way to capture the notion given in the quote. But again, there is a problem. This, the dimension that we are still considering is, is still huge. It's uh, of the order of the size of vocabulary. So what can we do with that? So the, there comes word to vec as a class of techniques from the, where, where we can learn word representation, which are not as huge dimension as one hot encoding, but is still able to capture and has the capability of capturing the meaning of it, meaning of a word. So Let's take an example. Uh, so here we have shining, bright, and look. So suppose these are the words which co-occur with a word star. So this guy is star, and this can be shining, this can be bright, this can be look. And I can say this to be day, then it's most likely that this guy will be sun. If I say this word is uh, night, this word might be stars. So what we are trying to capture is, uh, suppose we are given a mathematical model, which given some word representation, combines them and gives another word representation. Now, if I can train this model some way that given the co-occurred words, it can give me a representation for the word which, uh, the source word. So that means giving shining bright and look, it can give me the word star. Then uh, this is a mathematical model I want to use. It can it has the capability of capturing the semantics. 
So what I mean is, uh, suppose we want to find a representation for star here. It can be shining here and night, uh, bright, and look. So I'll get uh, stars here. I have shining bright day and look. I'll get sun here. So, but there is a very small difference, but it's still it's sharing a lot of context, right? It is sharing shining, bright, and look, and every, many of such words. Since the input is uh, similar, the output is going to be same. That is the property of mathematical model. If the majority of the input values are same, it will give me the same output. So, hence, uh, the representation that I'm getting here will be close to each other. Now, this is one way of modeling. I can do this. Uh, I can use another mathematical model, which given a word, it gives me a bunch of other words, which is likely to co-occur with this, this word. So here I'll give stars and it should give me as output uh, shining, bright, look, or uh, etc. So ag again, the same property can be applied. If I have sun here, I'll generate a bunch of word. I have stars here, I'll generate a bunch of words. And if those bunch of words intersect with each other, that means the input has Input is similar. So, uh, is it clear that the, this context word are ha, have an impact on the meaning of the word that we are considering, right? So, apparently, the uh, the name for this uh, model is called continuous bag of word model, and the other one is called skip gram model, where we just uh, this is a sentence we take one guy out and consider the other words as the context of this word. So that, that's called a script go model. And it has been empirically verified that this model works better than this model. But that's not our concern for now. Yeah? Yeah, so what we have is uh, we want to learn some bunch of numbers for all the vectors, right? Now I have this mathematical model, which given a certain uh, list of words, give me another word. Now, how can uh, how can I learn the vectors? Because uh, for learning vector, I have to give some objective, right? I, I can just put any random numbers and it will work. Well. Uh, it won't work. So what I do is I put a context word, and the model should give me the word that I'm considering. So if I can train the model like that, I'll get a good enough representation. Uh, is it clear? Have vectors. We want to learn. You have a lot of words, right? And you want to represent these words by vectors. Now, these vectors are just a series of numbers. You want to learn these vectors such that those numbers make sense. Because if shining in itself is just alphabetical, but if you wanted to learn a vector of numbers for shining, it has to have some meaning, right? So you are saying that the vectors for each of these words, shining, look, day, and light, all of those, if you sum together, or that sum can be replaced with any other composition function. If you sum those vectors, you should get the vector representation for sun. Right? So what this entire model is doing is it's saving the context of a word, the something which occurs in the front, something which occurs at the back, and gives you the prime word. So that's just making sense out of those numbers which occur in that one vector. Yeah. So. Yeah, but uh, I'm not going into detail of what this guy does. But that, that composition need not be sum. It can be a lot of other things. But yeah. that's just for simplicity that you can think of it as summing up all the vectors. So, uh, yeah, this was uh, one way of learning word vectors. And we'll see a quick demo of uh, how these vectors perform. So, yeah. Do we have that cable? Thunderbolt. Yeah. 
yeah uh, yeah sorry for the interruption so what you are uh, de demoing is uh, so the model that we explain uh, that uh, model has been trained on a big corpus so it's like 100 million text uh, text fragments of google news and uh, after, after training we got some bunch of word vectors so what can we, we do here is uh, put a pair of word and get how similar they are so in our example we had zebra and horse so it, it gives me some similarity score so this is a uh, one is the best minus one is the least whatever was the vector representation of zebra and the vector representation of horse in the form of a vector of numbers what is the similarity between those two numbers if you change that to some other bird or something you might i say i say school the example that we gave this value is quite low right is almost uh, they're not correlated at all so yeah yeah and uh, uh i can also say so suppose uh, nearest neighbor so given a word i can find what are the other words in my vocab which are similar to this word so suppose i give delhi so i get here yeah so delhi uh, yeah so basically delhi mumbai chennai kerala chandigarh so these are basically locations inside india so it has a certain uh, it has captured the meaning of the word in some way so and suppose i give toyota yeah it gives me some of the car companies so based on that uh, news corpus that it read it has learned some representation which has captured the meaning of those words yeah is net not net uh, so what we have done is uh, based on the corpus we have already learned some vectors word vectors we clear on that what we are currently doing is given this one vector we are finding the nearest neighbors of those so we are calculating is on the fly the vocab is fixed yeah so you you have some data to start with and you learn your vector representation for all of these words on this big corpus now after these vectors are learned you don't need this corpus anymore you just retain your vector representations and then that is all so this these scores which you are seeing here are uh, i think the cosine product of whatever yeah cosine similarity is neighbor in the vector space right so this is a 300 dimension vector what are the nearest neighbors in that vector space it's returning that so yeah the if vectors are already learned but i mean we are not learning here but we've already learned and saved the vector yeah so you, you guys can suggest some word if you want sorry cancel it gives all the types of cancel so yeah yeah oh no 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 it's not like that not 300 other words but 300 numbers 300 numbers when I mean, you cannot you cannot think of each dimension so it's a 300 length vector each of which is filled with some number you cannot associate what each number is doing yeah it is rearranging the vector space in such a way that the words fill these 300 numbers in this way such that the context is preserved and you observe that because by just preserving the context of words you are able to obtain a lot more information yeah so one example is this apple if you say it it got gets a fruit because most of the time when apple is mentioned it will have a small a at the beginning but if i change it to capsi it gets the company because whenever a company is being mentioned a will be on cap, cap uh, capitalized so so yeah uh, unlike uh, guess guess it guess it What, what do you think? So you know the model, right? It's coming from the context. So will you find the zebra animal mostly occurring with zebra crossing ever in the in your text? <coughs> It does exist, but this model is trying to make sense of the words 
in respect to what it co occurs with. So basically, uh, I can say I cross zebra crossing, but I will never say I cross zebra. So they, they won't occur in the similar context. Uh, what if I try it like Yeah, we can try. Tell, tell some more. So zebra crossing co occurs with such things. Yeah. What? You see what happens? Wow. <laughs> yeah. You so, learn those vectors initially. You don't have those vectors. You are supposed to learn those vectors. Yeah, and the yeah, assumption for anything. Should I do analogy? Yeah. 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 I think if you try with capital C, it will be better. I don't know. I'm just guessing. No, it's still the same. Yeah, so most of the time, can so it depends on the stats on the data that we have. So cancer has been most of the time it has mentioned as a disease, not as a zodiac sign. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that vector occurs less, which is why it takes like, more time. Yeah. So, but anyways, you can resume it. Yeah. So should I do analogy, or you can just resume it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, now, uh, suppose this is a this is a vector space. Suppose it's three dimensional. Uh, the king vector lies here, and the queen vector, based on the number that it has learned, it lies here. Suppose I want a directional vector from here to here. So what I do is queen minus king, right? That will give me a vector from here to here. That's what we used, used to do in vector algebra. And similarly, I do from man to woman. What turns out is this vector is parallel to that vector. So what it uh, does is it captures the gender uh, relation. So I'll, I'll just show it there. Yeah, go to analogy. King, queen, and man. If I draw that, so it somehow gets woman because it has captured that information somehow. And re really funny thing can happen here. So if I say here, uh, okay. So any guesses? Oh yeah, hopefully you're right. Decent enough, right? But what if I say, don't judge me, but yeah, what if I say Jadeja? You don't know these guys? By the way, they're footballer. I, I'll show you. Uh, okay, uh, but they're footballer. I, I, I Google them, they're, they're footballers. So I didn't mean anything else apart from this demo. And it also captures information like Delhi is a city. So what is car? It's a vehicle. So it captures those kind of relationship also. And yeah, so you know it's quite cool. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'll hand it over to Prakar. He'll talk about how can we infer new knowledges. It is this? Yeah. Mm. Hello everyone. I'm Prakar. I'm a master's by research student here, and I will be. Am I audible? But it is recording. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about what is knowledge inference. Uh, so you know uh, what according to you in general inference means? Inferring. So basically if you want to put it in layman terms you have some knowledge with you and with the given knowledge you want to conclude something else which is not evident in it. Right? Is that simple inference 
terminology you you mean inference like that so here again we are restricting ourselves to text not to video or audio but if within given text data can you still infer something more with just given so much text data right so this this thing occurred very recently in hindu as a headline indian envoy walks out of book launch attended by vijay malya in london right it does not talk much about what event was happening why was vijay malya in london why why, why did the envoy walk out so any guesses on why did this event occur as such please anyone answer right so exactly so in order if you just read this headline as such you would not be able to make much sense out of it right you have to know that vijay malya is an offender he has been summoned by indian courts and he is absconding to london which is why when he went to one of these book launch events where some indian ambassador was there the ambassador walked out right because he is an offender one would not make much sense out of this headline if they did not know the previous story right so this is just a way to intelligently comprehend any given piece of text now if your stakes are high and if you are going to make some decision right here you are just learning something more or trying to understand whatever this meant in a better way but what if you were to make some decision right you have to buy gold today will you what will you base your decisions on in general yes but price is there every day right so what price will you buy it on right so predictions is one but again so okay so that is right but one line of thought can be if you are updated you know that brexit is announced the referendum happened a lot of people voted for england to get out of eu right european union they might possibly leave and if you also knew that a lot of people so this this is from hindu but economics time had predicted that once eu referendum results are out and if england decides to leave european union the crude oil prices will crash and they later also observed that the prices were falling down right so economics time covered this on how brexit is leading to oil price changes if you were also to extend this to saying how are oil prices and gold prices connected to each other right if you look through all your history there is not a strict correlation it is not always that whenever petroleum rises then gold has to rise but on an average there is a positive correlation right if the gold prices are high petroleum prices tend to be high they are complementary products but anyways so there is some positive correlation among these two commodities and if you look at these three pieces of information right this is this is very recent and you might know that these things are happening but it's only when you put all of these three together you can infer that maybe the prices of gold is going to be soft in the next near or maybe in the next few days or in near future and that's true like the the rate of increase of gold price is much lower now right so this might be the right time but again this is just one chain of thought you cannot you cannot be sure that what this chain of thought is going to guarantee you profits this is one way in which given a few circumstances you can infer something more right so in these two cases vijay malya's case and vijay malya's case was just understanding the second case was to trying to make some decisions can you tell me what is common in these two cases yes background knowledge definitely and exactly exactly so these these are the two things right one both of them have very limited knowledge given to you out front you have its preceding history missing and even if you had a history you still need a way to make sense out of those things by connecting those informations right so this is where you realize that okay maybe to know real world things in more depth you have to have a lot more background knowledge if you want to make a holistic picture of a single thing
you need background knowledge and you know it is very intuitive for humans to connect these individual pieces of information but if you let it to a machine it is not very evident for a machine which is not trained to just connect the price of gold and oil and to say that okay maybe brexit has happened so these two facts are connected machine has to be told right although it seems very intuitive for humans that these three facts together make much more sense but to machines it does not right so can you expect such behavior from machines it's very high to ask but still if you wanted machines to make such intelligent decisions is your expectations right right so let's just say that if you have a few questions to answer so again we are coming back from real setting to more science and if you had such questions and if or let's say any acid attack right you just wanted to google up what should you do after an acid attack google will return you some answer but most those are those answers are mostly occurring in some text document as such right so if you wanted to know what should you do if there were if you got splashed with acid any guess on what the answer is right but how do you know it's water one thing is you would know that for a fact you would know that for a fact but next you know that the ph value of acid is low so is for vinegar salt is uh, salt is neutral formaldehyde is methanol in water which does not much help and so water again you might know this as a fact or you could go about inferring the answer if you knew that acid is low ph and you would need something neutral or with high ph to neutralize it similarly for this second question if you wanted to know which is the greatest air pollution any guess uh, so again you will have to know this for a fact that it is the automobile industry which is causing a lot of pollution in united states but if you did not know this as a fact can you still somehow gather statistics from other web sources and maybe conclude this answer right so you see a common theme in all these slides that there is something which you might know and there is something which you might not know but still try to come up with an answer that's the inference we are talking about right so you realize that there are a few basic requirements if you understand inference as as such one is you should have background knowledge uh, i am not sure if you attended this talk on monday there was a talk by professor partha he talked over big big text to big data yes so i think even he would have spoken a lot more about background knowledge but anyway so we construct knowledge graphs anyone wants to say what knowledge graphs are when I mean, i'm pretty sure he introduced that direct yeah and there is a huge graph which just tries to capture normal world related facts by yes yes yeah exactly so that's that's the entity relation graph you explode it to the, all the knowledge you have about your entire world and just create one such graph because you never know which piece of information will be relevant when right so you want to capture that in a large knowledge graph right and then there is this idea of inference that even if you had so much knowledge at your disposal you would still want some mechanism to connect these individual pieces of information and make sense in one way right so again like we said the in in your knowledge graph there might be a direct fact saying us highest pollutant automobiles right this might exist as such but if it did not what else would you do so this is where we come to the idea of inference where you don't have the knowledge directly with you but you want it to be inferred the first case is normal right you had knowledge so you did not have to do much work about it uh so again so this is an instance of how a knowledge graph looks like it's just a small fragment right this i think must be familiar to most of you right so again did 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 he cover inference also on this no okay so this knowledge graph is representing a lot of facts by so the black ones are entities here red ones are the relations over edge labels right so here you get to know a lot of things that toronto is in country canada there is a team called maple leafs its hometown is toronto it plays hockey and a lot of things 
you can just imagine the magnitude of this graph right because this is just capturing one small team and one country and something around it but the actual magnitude of this graph goes in millions and billions of entities and hundreds of thousands of relations right so can you so can you infer something more which is not present in this knowledge graph as such as a entity relation entity but can you say something more for instance toronto maple leaves you can say that it's a canadian team right that's evident although there is no direct edge between toronto maple leaves and canada can you still see that there is a chain of edges which make you feel that it's a canadian team right so can you guys come up with any more information which you can infer from this graph but it's not there directly maybe this is a price question yeah but canada is a big country right so you cannot say which airport should i book for canada you can say which airport do i book for a nearest city toronto yes right so i mean you can say that that airport lies in canada but you cannot say that if i want to go to canada i have to go to that airport yes yes you are right but i am saying that if you wanted to go to canada okay sure yeah, yeah that make yeah that's yes one more there there yeah one the last row yeah but that's not really true because you're right you're right a rule like that should exist but if you go and check wikipedia it's not a true fact but that's also right i mean one such rule can exist it would have what yes i mean that's evident right so i i am asking you some real world query some real world query which you would be interested in and which you can infer from this yeah exactly right right exactly so red wings you can infer that because both of them have participated in the stanley cup and you know what toronto leafs is it's it's a hockey team so you can also say that red wings is also a hockey team right so similarly you see this graph can just go to different dimensions right so there is there is red wings and uh, until here we were all talking about sports here it came to geography and from red wings just because its hometown is detroit we shift to companies we also know that the general motors is located in detroit you know that toyota is an automobile company and general motors and toyota are competing with each other so although you did not know what general motors is all about because you know this that it's competing with toyota which you have a lot of information about you can start to infer that okay general motors is also something to do with automobile industry right so again all these things once you are given a graph these are very natural and a human can very intuitively come up with such rules but if you want a human to sit down and again this graph is a very very small snippet this graph extends in the dimension of millions and billions right you can explore it to all dimensions if you wanted to find out such rules and if you wanted to do them manually it's not such a good idea you realize right by because you would want to extract maximum rules and you will have to invest significant manpower in just trying to come up with these rules so you want some automatic way or you want the machine to learn these rules by themselves is that clear i mean the motivation for why you cannot have a human sitting there to find all of these rules individually you want the machine yes uh, sir i had a question if somehow uh, if we have a relationship like toronto maple leafs won the stanley cup in some year yes so how would we represent that relationship to a bi-directional graph uh in some year yeah so yes related to both the things so how would i right so you are right uh this what i am showing you here is a normal entity relation entity graph it has a temporal dimension to it so when did this happen there is an extra there is an extra information which is captured in this edge but it's not shown in this graph so for instance if if apj abdul kalam is president of india it's not true today it was true some time back 
So you cannot say that this fact as such is false. The fact is true but it has a temporal dimension to it. It was true in some time validity and then it is no more valid. So yeah, so cases like that, that are captured by adding dates to the edges. And location, yes. Yes. So what you are saying is actually uh, it's a complex version of knowledge graph. It exists. What you are saying is each of these relations need not be binary. They can be a KRE relation. So for instance, if there was some match happening, some match has team one, team two, who won the match? When was it held? Where was it held? All such things form one event, right? So that is a complex version of knowledge graph, but I thought maybe for this talk, it's better to stick with some entity relation graph and the complex, it's called an event graph and it's not in such a mature stage, but the idea is there. What you're saying is right that not everything can be captured into one binary relation, right? You will have to have carry relations to capture complex interconnections, yes. Uh, yeah, so we were talking about how will you ask the machine to infer rules over such graph if you just gave this as its input, right? You, it was difficult for humans themselves to find out such rules. How will a machine do by itself? So there is something called as path ranking algorithm. Uh, so let's say if you had such edge, right? General Motors and there is Toyota here. And you wanted to just learn inference for one particular type of edge. Let's say competes with. So, uh, okay, so competes with an economic sector, okay, uh, right? So, what you do is in this entire knowledge graph, you bank on what is it's it's very popular, right? Big data. If you want evidence whether this thing exists or not, just go to the internet and start searching for that thing. It is it, there are there are good chances that you find such things. So even if your graph is very sparse here, if you had a much larger graph, you will find many such instances of competes with some different another company is competing with some different another company, right? There will be many such instances of this relation in the entire knowledge graph. What you do is you start with what are known as random walks in graph. It might be a little technical, but I've tried to not put in any math formula here. So just think of it as uh, from this node, from General Motors, if you wanted to infer that, okay, it, it has something to do with automobiles, you would start random walks from General Motors in all directions, right? Here, there will be a lot of knowledge graph. You start in all possible directions just to randomly walk over the graph. And there will be many other such instances like General Motors and other part of knowledge graphs. You just perform a normal random walk and you store each of these path trails competes with economic sector. This is one trail and you store it as one feature. Right? So this is just explaining that what would you, if, if you had specific instances, what will you fill these X1, X2s with? This is one particular specific trail of paths. Right, you perform random graph. Uh, you perform your random walk over the over the entire knowledge graph, not just one concentrated part of it. And so you just replace all of these with variables, and you form features out of each of these, out of each of these paths. Um, so I don't know if you guys are interested in learning this technicality of this thing, but if if Okay, so just putting putting it uh, briefly, each of these paths become one feature, right? So you have to again build a classifier for one particular type of relation. If you wanted to infer one relation, maybe have a classifier for it. And it's normal features, uh, a logistic regression over features. So what you do is, and your feature, so feature is just this path, but the numerical value of this feature is the probability of arriving at node Y if you start from node X and you follow a particular path. That's the value of that feature. And it's it's simple after that you have to learn the logistic regression weights. Whichever feature is weighed the highest, you term that as your discriminative feature. The rest of them are not so discriminative. So some of the examples which could be learned from 
machine by itself by no human intervention but by just observing patterns within the knowledge graph if you had a team whose home stadium was some stadium s right and it was located in some city c it is very evident for humans that this team has to be based in this city right it's it's again intuitive for humans but for the machine to itself learn such patterns out of the uh, given knowledge graph it's not so trivial right so these are simple transitive relations but it can learn much more complex relations so this is again one of the simple ones so here you see that this is length 1 length 2 and this is the inference here this is little more complex length 1 length 2 length 3 and one inference this these rules can be much more complex as in you you might have a longer path to infer one one particular relation right so this one says that if there is some athlete who is playing for some team t team's home stadium is this s and there is some other athlete whose home stadium is also s there are high chances that both of these guys are teammates right you would have to yes no so you would have to manually find such patterns in graph and many times humans will miss out such patterns but machines just tend to grasp these things any doubts so there are a few applications to this uh i am not sure yes okay yeah yeah sure uh um so there are a few applications to this maybe i can skip this one because it's just a normal the uh, google is coming up with its google knowledge vault which is a very big knowledge uh, knowledge graph basically they are again okay, they 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 had freebase with them before and now it's become google knowledge vault which is a very very big knowledge graph so now they have started with it's not now it is sometime now but uh, they have started you know resolving such queries that even if you just wanted to know this thing right the answer to this query you can see that there are two independent facts here right president of united states and when sachin tendulkar was born but it still gives you a nice crisp answer it is because it is traversing a few knowledge graphs at the back you can try this with uh, a few more interesting queries like when was sachin tendulkar married you know it will still give you the answer when was ms dhoni born or married who was the president of india you can try with such variants maybe due to lack of time i'll not show it to you here but google is accessible everywhere right you can try it uh again a small thing here so there was this allen ai challenge i'm not sure if how many guys are active on kaggle very aware of this challenge it happened some time ago and the the problem statement was to come up with a eighth grade solver which could if given enough text data can you solve english multiple choice questions right you have all the knowledge which you want it's a closed book test so you cannot refer to a textbook online you have to learn your model save that model and then answer all these multiple choice questions right so uh, we also participated as a lab in this project uh, but uh, right so and and we we had a series of methods to go about this problem right uh, so there were a lot of models which were just based on information retrieval if the fact exists as such re, uh, return it textual entailment these are a few models if you look at them these are a few keywords if interested you can look up those keywords this one was again one running inference over knowledge graphs you create a knowledge graph out of these eighth grade textbooks and then for questions of this kind uh, the the one the acid one what causes burns or what causes something to fall you can expect your knowledge graph to infer such small things uh the model was just to create an ensemble over a lot of these uh a lot of these models so maybe i can just show you a small demo so again uh, it takes for every query the entire model right to run all of those models and to then aggregate their answers it takes quite some time so again what we have done is we ran the entire model over 1000 questions and have stored them so that you don't have to wait for the answers for you know every time to answer a question it takes 2 minutes so for now we have run the model on all the 1000 questions randomly we are picking up questions and 
it is still the the computer as such was still abstracted away from the true answer right you were supposed to guess the answer and then show the course so maybe any of you can guess the answer for this correct answer is hydrogen right so these are any random questions you can just maybe stop at any point and maybe this one anywhere right so these are not trivial questions which a machine can answer but if you had sufficiently complex models and if you had a way of inferring more knowledge from the given knowledge you can possibly you know try to get better at this any guess right so both of them answered right just last question maybe right anything right so uh right getting back to this right and finally we ended up 10th in this competition and i guess that is it thank you thanks for attention okay so let's quickly go for lunch and come back at 2 okay make sure